Hey everyone, welcome back. So, our 30k YouTube and Twitch partner celebration stream went off without a hitch this last weekend. I had a lot of fun with y'all, and it was a blast having everyone show up. We got to try some new party games, and I think some of them will make a return in the future. We started things off with Warframe. What better way to celebrate than where we started? First thing we tackled was an Inaros level cap run. Yes, you heard right, Inaros Steel Path Disruption against level 9k. This has been on my mind for a while and I know people were memeing me to do it, so we just went and did it. But this isn't just any level cap run, it was complete with meme weapon setups as well. My arsenal of choice, a lens to DPS, an epitaph, and Vastalog. The lens was amazing for killing trash mobs actually and could even make a pretty fat dent against demolists. Though it definitely struggled against them as the levels climbed up. I would say the viability of a pure slash lens with full strips against demos fell off around level 2000 or so. Full strip because it took multiple shots so the alpha damage from lens itself was pretty significant in chalking demolist HP. If I picked an actual proper DPS weapon, I doubt I would have had any issues whatsoever dealing with the level cap demos. Of course, Inaros is the elephant in the room here. How did I stay alive on a frame that gets one shot even by level 600s on the best tanking builds? Well, that's the thing. I didn't. I still died many times, but it was much less than how much a normal Inaros would die. This isn't a normal Inaros build. You see that 2300 HP bar? So this setup only works in team disruption and is entirely dependent on your whole team being capable and actually able to kill trash fodder consistently, which honestly isn't much to ask in proper teams, but also means this is definitely not a build you want to bring on a random level cap run. But then again, regardless of build, why would you bring an Inaros to level cap willingly, if not just for the meme? So let's take a look at what's going on here. This is the Inaros build I was using. It looks very weird, doesn't it? It's because of the philosophy I explained earlier. When doing endurance runs, getting hit at all without shield getting up means instant death. Yes, Inaros works fine for Star Chart. Yes, Inaros even works fine for Base Steel Path. He even works for multi-hour survivals. But only up to a point. Once you get above level 600, he starts getting one shot. It doesn't matter if you're using an 11k HP Tri Umbral Inaros with Adaptation and Null Stars or Aviator, etc. You will die. For most people, this isn't a problem, but for what we are doing here, where the entire point was to bring him to level 9999, this obviously creates some issues. Where do you reach level 600 plus? If I remember correctly, that's somewhere between 3 to 4 hours on Steel Pass Survival, or about round 24 in Disruption, which is about an hour and 20 minutes in Steel Pass. A level cap run typically takes about 2.5 hours in Disruption, plus or minus half an hour. But getting back to the build, if you're going to die to a single hit, then there is no point in me building for health. Instead, I went the other route and build for massive CC. More specifically, this is a muzzle flash in Aros. Now, I know I could run a Resonator in Aros, but that completely removes the threat of enemies in the game. At least Muzzle Flash still requires you to actually kill enemies to upkeep the ability. I want some semblance of fun still. Muzzle Flash is the augment for shooting gallery, Mesa's Helmet. While the base ability is kind of copium as a helmet, the augment makes it one of the best helmets, if not abilities, in the game. It creates an AoE blind that completely bypasses all obstacles on map and even hits things in other rooms so long as they are in range. It triggers off 6 kill assists from your team as a whole, which is why I said this is specifically a team-oriented Inaros Endurance build. It relies on your team being able to kill enemies constantly and you will have 100% uptime on blinds. Even better, there is no limit to the radius of teammates nearby killing enemies for the assists. They can be literally on the other side of the map killing and it will still trigger the augment after 6 kills. Just keep in mind it will only proc the AoE blind on shots. This means you can save the blind for until you get closer to enemies, but on a build with 265 range, you won't have to worry about that. Anything within 31.8 meters of us anywhere on the map will get blinded for 9.3 seconds. Do you think your teammates can kill 6 enemies within 9 seconds? This is how you essentially have a 100% uptime on the blind. The only issue is if you are traveling to new areas where you can get killed before the blind triggers. 
but if you spend any decent amount of time in a zone, enemies will never be able to shoot you. And enemies that can't shoot you means enemies can't kill you, which means now our health is irrelevant. This is how we keep Inaros alive in level 9k. Remember, it's all about team kills, even your own. Because while shooting gallery rotates through your teammates, you will always have it active on yourself, so there are always two players, one being you, that are able to contribute to the 6 kill count. The rest of the build, besides the three ranged mons, focuses around supporting these blinds. We have Flow, which honestly doesn't need to be primed because the only ability we're using that requires energy is Muzzle Flash. His 4 doesn't consume energy, but I'm using the augment for it. Why? Because the Negation Swarm is an improved Prime Shirt Footed. Not only does it block staggers, it also blocks all status effects. This is important because we don't have Rolling Guard on the build, and Vazarin does not remove status effects while you're invulnerable. Being completely immune to status means you don't have to worry about dots killing you after Vazarin expires due to heat or electric enemy weapon conduits, or cold procs slowing your movement, or etc. It does consume 3% of the Scarab Armor bonus on every status blocked, but it honestly isn't hard to maintain this and you can easily recharge it whenever within the safety of your Vazarin dash. Prompt Continuity is there to extend your blinds to 9 seconds. And finally, Vigor Swamp for faster swap speed since Epitaph is our primer and Lens is our DPS, while also giving a base damage boost. Our aura is pure quality of life because we don't have shields for a brief respite and no use of strength scaling with the growing power. So I went to Enemy Radar and Vigilante Pursuits to see all the enemy spawns and most importantly, the Demless movement on map super early. Combining this with Primed Animal Instinct gave me a 63 meter detection radius which lets you see way beyond your tile. Energize for easy topping up an energy, but you could also slot Eruption here for knockdown spam, and Arcane Acceleration to charge those lens shots even faster. I'll take a look at our Panzer first because of how important it is. Viral's quill spreads viral, blah blah blah, but here, a Martyr Symbiosis is essentially health gate. It gives you 0.2 seconds iframes when you're supposed to die and sacrifices your cat instead. Panzer Devolution is what gives your cat infinite lives to respawn, and Attack Assault also applies to Martyr. 60% of the time your cat will not die when procking Martyr because of this mod. The rest are your standards, since that's our support that does nothing on the Cineros loadout, radar, and vacuum. There is a bug that causes your Panzer to permanently die for the mission that is quite uncommon but has been around a while. That will remove your Martyr Symbiosis health gate window and you'll notice because you'll be dying a lot more in Inaros. I don't know what causes this bug but usually you'll get it later in the run due to just RNG odds but this time I got it super early around rounds 12 to 14 which honestly sucks but it is what it is. The lens build is riven, and honestly, I wouldn't recommend this for endurance, but it does hold up fine against trash fodder. To replace this riven, I would slot bladed rounds instead, which is basically half my riven. It will still kill level 9000s easily, but you won't get those pretty reds. It does struggle against Demless though. The weapon is somewhat unwieldy, but the built-in ammo mutation makes it much easier to handle. The Vigilante supplies is only really here for the Vigilante set bonus, as we were bringing a Panzer instead of a Sentinel, although it does stack up a even higher conversion bonus bonus alongside Lens's innate mutation. If you did bring a Sentinel, I would suggest Jin with the Awaken precept to give it infinite lives and endurance. The rest of this Lens build constitutes a standard crit slash build. We have crit chance and crit damage, and 100 munitions for those juicy slash procs, primed bane for double dipping the slash 2.4 times more damage, and primed firestorm for better trash mobbing. This weapon has 7.2 meter radius at base, and this brings it up to nearly 12 meters. It's honestly not optimized for killing Demolists, as Blast Radius mods are useless against them, but I just wanted a hybrid trash mob and Demolist weapon. Vile Acceleration is extremely important because the net fire rate gets doubled on bows. This is particularly nasty because my Riven has minus fire rate alongside critical delays 20% penalty, so Vile was actually mandatory here. It is actually fine to use Critical Deceleration on Lens though. Here is the leftovers of another build that used Point Strike and Vile, so no fire rate penalties whatsoever. We still only get the charge time down to 0.43 seconds. So this build I'm using with both the Riven and Critical Delay is still fine at 0.68 with an effective 76.4% bonus fire rate since it gets doubled. 
And we have even Arcane Acceleration stacking for a net 166.4 fire rate, or a final 0.45 seconds charge time. Yes, only fire rate mods get doubled effect on bows and not arcanes, but in the future I would probably replace Merciless with Dexterity because it was a bit annoying having to maintain this for Demless as I would start losing a stack every 4 seconds while trying to hunt them down with the ping sounds. Dexterity lasts 20 seconds per stack and would be super easy for me to build the 6 stacks with an armor stripping vast lock. I would only need to get a single enemy kill near the demo to refresh the final stack, probably, whereas I would already have lost 5 Merciless stacks in that same time. This is the mass lock build in question. It's a generic full strip build with the only status to be refreshed while stripping being viral. Sometimes you may want other elements like magnetic or heat or something else. These slots can take up gladiator vice quickening or even this life strike slot. But here the extra attack speed just makes it much comfier to use. Amalgam Morgan Shatter is to get the heavy attack over sooner if I use it by accident. How I armor strip with this? I use the high noon stance because the first attack of the neutral melee shoots twice. I alternate between neutral melee and forward melee attack, which breaks their combos constantly and animation cancels into the other one. That way you can shoot extremely quickly. You do need to pace your inputs with the attack speed modded though. If you try to do this too fast, it will screw up. But practice makes perfect. If you don't want to deal with this combo alternating animation cancel method, you can just spam E on bullet dance. But just keep in mind it will be noticeably slower than what I showed here. The Primer Massive AoE Prime Fulmination Epitaph. This gives it a 13.28 meter radius for maximum priming potential. We got Radiation and Viral modded on to both increase our damage delta and turn friendly fire on and detract their aggro from us. The built-in blast will also reduce their accuracy for if they still actually shoot us and force Cold Prox to slow them down even more. The ultimate all-in-one primer and CC tool. Prime demo mutation because you'll be shooting this a lot and Augur Seeker for longer status duration. On other frames that actually have shields, this Augur mod will also contribute to the shield conversion bonus for regenerating shield gate through casting abilities. Arcane is dexterity for extra swap speed. And that is it. If you ever want to bring an Arrows to Endurance on a team, this is a way to keep them alive. Don't get shot to start with with these massive blinds. All you gotta do is just make sure Muzzle Flash is active at all times and have your Scarab armor charged up to block status effects. Every once in a while, when the percentage drops from blocking too many statuses, you can Vazarin dash yourself to freely charge your 4 back up during the iframes. Meet a Demolist? Slow it down with Epitaph. Then freeze it with Megas Lockdown and strip armor with Vast Lock. Then pull out your lens and bust out those shots to cap them preferably aiming at the head for the headshot multiplier bonus. Honestly, that rotation will work with any DPS weapon, and better for ones that are actually competent for disruption demolist killing. Finally, one last thing. Don't fail conduits to have the pack hunter bug effect, especially if it isn't the final conduit. This conduit effect replaces spawns with the Hayaka Masters and their spawns and occupies the spawn cap. If you fail this conduit, it will not reset spawns back to normal, but the conduit does not spawn more Hayaka Masters either, which will break spawns and leave you with nothing to kill and force you to extract. This actually happened to us on round 45 on the second last conduit. So we only got to see level 9800s and barely missed out on the level 9999s. Keep that in mind. Anyways, if this is your first time watching, feel free to leave like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get new information out always, as soon as possible. Like I've done with covering all this new war stuff and the future content. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.